So the 96 Olympics, often referred to as the Title IX Olympics, for the very first time in U.S. women's basketball history, all the athletes trained together for nearly a year in preparation for the games. It was also the first time that softball and soccer were allowed in the games. So the objective was clear for the women of the Olympics. It was their time to shine. It was their time to grab the respect that was so long overdue. And it was their time to make good on a promise of Title IX. Candace Parker narrates the incredible journey of young girls who were told that their sports careers would end after school, high school, or college, now competing on a world stage. 25 years ago, in this city, the nation and world watched in collective awe at some of the most dominant performances in sports. There's great pride that comes with seeing those three letters on the front of your uniform. As an athlete, I believe it's by far the greatest honor that you can have witnessing new events and pioneering triumphs from Team USA. When you hear that national anthem being played because you did your job and you did it well. Achievements that established the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta as the summer of women. I have never felt anything like that before. In the 90s, there was not a lot of women's sports on TV. It made it difficult at times to be able to have role models, to have people to inspire. It's extremely important to be able to visualize and see those that are like you. As a young girl, the Little League game that was just before my brother, the head coach came out and said, how would you like to play on my Little League baseball team? And then he said, we're going to have to cut your hair really short and give you a boy's name. We're going to call you Bob. And I said, sir, thank you, but no thank you. If I have to hide who I am, I just don't feel it's right. I did not have a, a female person that I looked up to growing up. There weren't a whole lot of girls playing any type of sports. So I was one of one. The 96 Olympians were a generation removed from the passage of Title IX in 1972, a law that sought to put American women on a more level playing field with the men. Women's basketball had started about in 1975. For the next 20 years, the game progressed on. But we needed a shot in the arm, something. And then along came the 96 Olympics. The Summer Olympics in 1996 were huge. In fact, a lot of people refer to it as the Title IX Olympics. I really feel it was the right time because these things do take time, right? You have to cultivate athletes over time. We were the fruit that was born from that amazing seed that was planted decades before. For the first time, the U.S. women's basketball team trained and played together for nearly a year in preparation. It was gold or failure. I was introduced by the head of USA Basketball this way. This is not about bronze. This is not about silver. This is about gold. Tara Vanderveer. We felt like it would have been failure to little girls who wanted to play basketball as a profession. If we didn't win gold, we couldn't let them down. I know all the other women's sports were in the position of, we're going to make the most out of these Olympic games. For the first time, women's soccer was going to be an Olympic sport. It was the first time softball was in the Olympic games. We were just starting to get going with being able to sustain the payment as a professional. It was about trying to make a name for our game and really trying to bring women's athletics to the forefront. We thought so many opportunities would have been missed. We added that to the pressure of winning the gold medal. Even with the added pressure, the U.S. women's basketball team dominated their opponents by an average of 28 points and beat Brazil for gold, 111 to 87, in front of a sellout crowd at the Georgia Dome. We had arguably the best players to ever play the game on one team. In dramatic fashion, the U.S. women's gymnastics team won its first team gold in history. The Magnificent Seven defied the odds, and Carrie Strug soared to fame by vaulting on an injured ankle. For Carrie Strug to land in the vault as she did, she made it one of the most memorable Olympic moments ever. In the final match against China, Tiffany Milbritt scored in the 68th minute to break a 1-1 tie and seal a 2-1 victory for the U.S., capturing the first Olympic gold medal in women's soccer. 
In the first game of the inaugural tournament, the U.S. softball team beat Puerto Rico 10 to 0. Nine days later, the U.S. beat China for the gold 3 to 1. After shortstop Dot Richardson hit a two-run homer down the right field line in the bottom of the third. When you've been denied opportunity and you're given it, boy, you just are ready. Nothing's going to stop you. Don't get me wrong, it was incredibly hard. And then when we were standing on that podium, collecting our gold medals, we said it was well worth it. We didn't have that, that finish. I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't really remember the Magnificent Seven as they did being at the Georgia Dome with 50,000 people in the arena cheering us on. Go USA is something that uh, is a once in a lifetime experience. When you're on that podium and that flag starts to rise up, the blood draws out of your body. It's an amazing feeling. There were many athletes that competed in fast pitch softball who paved the way, and that 96 gold medal was for them. When I bent over and the Olympic gold medal was put around my neck, I was living that dream that I had as a seven-year-old girl. Each and every one of us having a story where those around us said it could never happen. It'll never happen. And for me as a young girl being denied the opportunity to compete in sports because of being born a girl, to then all of a sudden with Title IX and the opportunities and living the dream in the 96 Olympics was the most humbling and most powerful moment in my life. As a result of the USA's 96 Olympic success, two women's professional basketball leagues formed, the ABL and the WNBA. It's about time there were an existing league where the United States basketball programs could play in the US. And if we didn't take the time to publicize professional women's basketball during the prime years of our careers, I really don't think we would be celebrating 25 years of the WNBA. It was hope to be able to see Dot and Lisa, those women who had done it over and over, and it, then finally becoming like this mainstream sport. I couldn't be more thrilled to be a product of Title IX and of all the women who have paved the way. It's not just about the achievements that we all made at the 1996 Olympic Games. It's the impact that we can continue to make decades and decades later. But even with the opportunities that sprang forth from the 96 Olympics, the playing field remains far from even. After the 2008 Games, softball was cut as an Olympic sport. And now it's a slow movement of trying to get back. And when it's been taken from you, like it has for the past two Olympics and possibly three, that definitely hurts in regards to the opportunities for young girls in our sport. Just seeing like, man, if, if I was a boy, I would be making millions, signing a huge Major League Baseball contract. We need more visibility for women's sports, and not just when it's the Olympic year, or not just when it's the NCAA tournament. I'm looking forward to the progress that we're gonna continue to make, we're gonna continue to fight, uh, because there are so many athletes in many sports uh, that deserve an opportunity to continue their careers. I want every young girl in the world to know that they can become whatever they want to become and it doesn't matter what your gender is you want kids to dream and you want them to dream big all right, for the folks at home, if they're not signing their children up, girls specifically up for sports, I, something's wrong with you, because I feel good. I feel like we should be, we should be out there doing it.